Welcome to the Phenomenological Alliance channel. In this video, we will discuss the topic of modeling natural phenomena based on principles of function of human senses. Today, electric and magnetic phenomena are understood in terms of the existence of polar opposite positive and negative electric or magnetic poles. Similarly, in ancient physics, it was considered that light and darkness as well as heat and coldness, are opposing principles that exist as realities and can cancel each other out. For instance, the concept of cold radiation served as the foundational idea for nocturnal ice-making practices in early India and Iran. Specially designed vessels were exposed to the nocturnal coldness, enabling the production of ice in the desert climate. However, Due to philosophical and theological debates, the ancient dualistic interpretation of light and thermal phenomena was subsequently abandoned. Hence, today, light and heat are considered active and real phenomena, while darkness and coldness are viewed merely as reduced levels of the active principles. All laws of thermodynamics, such as reflection or focusing of thermal radiation, are now exclusively addressed in terms of heat radiation, not radiation of coldness. The second law of thermodynamics, in simple terms, states that heat always flows spontaneously from hotter to colder regions of matter. It is interesting that even after the Renaissance, occasional opinions suggesting the existence of cold radiation appeared. As early as 1589, the Italian sculptor, an architect Giacomo della Porta claimed that coldness could be reflected and focused. At the end of the 18th century, a British physicist Count Rumford conducted numerous experiments on focusing coldness. When snow is placed at the focus of one of the two concave mirrors, a decrease in temperature is observed at the focus of the opposite mirror. Count Rumford claimed the existence of frigorific rays, these experiments were largely ignored by the scientific community because they contradicted the prevailing view that thermal energy is always a positive quantity and that there can be no inverse thermal energy. To counter the possibility of inverse energy existence, in 1791, Pierre Prévost proposed the theory of exchange, asserting that all bodies continuously both radiate and absorb heat at all temperatures. This was an attempt to explain the appearance of the reduced temperature at the focal point of concave mirrors. Since cold bodies also radiate heat, it is possible to focus their radiation. However, the total radiation is now less intense, resulting in a lower temperature at the focal point compared to the surrounding temperature. By accepting that heat and light are forms of electromagnetic radiation, Prevost's theory has evolved into its contemporary formulation as Planck's law. Every physical body spontaneously and continuously emits electromagnetic radiation in a way that the body completely absorbs all radiant energy falling upon it, reaches some equilibrium temperature, and then it re-emits that energy as quickly as it absorbs it. However, Rumford also defended his arguments claiming that It is impossible to explain how the same body could receive and retain and reject and drive away the same substance at one and the same time. This is an operation not only incomprehensible, but apparently impossible, and to which there is nothing to be found analogous to render it probable. First, Let's attempt to replicate Rumford's experiment of focusing coldness. The setup consists of a parabolic mirror with a diameter of 30 cm, with a container in front of it. At the focal distance from the mirror, a glass plate coated with soot is placed. The surface temperature is measured with a laboratory thermometer. The setup is in dark room where a constant temperature is maintained. A room thermometer is used to control the constant temperature of the room. Dry ice is used as a cold source. The experiment lasted about 20 minutes, 
and measurements were made periodically every few minutes. The experiment was repeated several times and the temperature drop of about 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 degrees of Celsius was always obtained. The cold focus effect can be enhanced in warmer room with the use of two parabolic mirrors. In the Piquet's and Ramford's experiments, the thermoscope was used instead of the thermometer, which was a better choice for this type of experiment. The thermoscope is a device that demonstrates temperature differences based on different volumes of gas at different temperatures. Essentially, it is the predecessor of the differential thermometer. When the surface of suited mirror is recorded with the thermal camera, the drop in temperature compared to the ambient temperature is observed at the focus. An attempt to understand how coldness can be focused leads to the same question as in optics when focusing an image with black color. Specifically, if the cold is merely a reduced amount of heat, why does the sum of reduced amounts of heat produce an even lower temperature in the focus? The answer to this enigma lies in understanding how we perceive temperature differences through our sense of heat. When we bring our hands closer to a warm body, such as a burning candle, our palms warm up and we perceive this as heat. In summer nights, we sense the heat radiation from stones that have absorbed sunlight throughout the day. Conversely, when we bring our palms closer to a cold body, for example, snow, our palms cool down and we feel the sensation of coldness. In moderate warmth, we may also perceive the radiating coolness from stones in the shade. The sense of heat perceives temperature differences in such a way that we act as a point of comparison. Bodies colder than us are felt as sources of cold, while bodies warmer than us are perceived as sources of heat. This suggests that the essential property of thermal phenomena is not the transfer of heat, but the achievement of temperature equilibrium over time. The relatively warmer pole cools down, while the relatively colder pole warms up. In the Ramford experiment, we observe the temperature drop on the warmer pole. On the cooler pole, ice melts as it heats up. The phenomenon of thermal equilibrium is inseparable from the phenomenon of warm and cold sources. In the process of reaching thermal balance, both the warm and cold poles always participate. Putting things in this way, we notice that there is no need to introduce the hypothesis that matter radiates energy at all temperatures. Understanding how human senses work confirms the obvious fact that bodies equalize their temperature with the temperature of the environment over time. Phenomenology examines the question of the structure of consciousness. Therefore, the phenomenological approach is always focused on the question of understanding human senses, since the sensuous part of human consciousness is formed through sensory perception. Without understanding the way human senses function, external phenomena remain enigmatic. Understanding ourselves is a prerequisite for comprehending natural phenomena. Since consciousness is always subject to development, phenomenology avoids formulating its views in the form of undeniable natural laws. The phenomenological approach recognizes that every law of nature 
is the perspective of a specific person on a specific issue, shaped by the consciousness that characterizes a particular historical epoch. The analysis of human perception leads to the conclusion that heat and light are perceived by different senses, namely the sense of heat and the sense of sight. Both senses function through the simultaneous perception of two opposites, the sense of sight through the simultaneous perception of light and dark, and the sense of heat through the simultaneous perception of warm and cold. Mm -hmm.